Okay, so let's do a uh, another Lucas Mill tips and tricks video. Um, just want to say uh, Happy New Year to everyone. It's uh, New Year's Day today, 2017. Um, my uh, my New Year's resolution that I've come up with this year is uh, to be more organised. Um, it's my year of organisation. I've uh, spent the last few years on uh, acquisition, building up my equipment base, building up my client base, um, yeah, just getting everything I need to uh, get jobs done. Um, the business is ticking along nicely now, got a lot of regular clients, new clients coming on. Uh, keeps me busy during the weekdays and uh, yeah so you've got a lot of stuff around the farm that I want to do as well on weekends a bit of an extension on the house going on um, yeah also want to do an extension on my office um, running out of space there get the shed a bit more organized timber racks Get my uh, slab storage organised down the hill. Just organisation. There's, uh, you know, there's doing the work, and then there's the maintenance, preparation, upgrades. Yeah, it seems to be almost half and half. You know, for every every hour that you spend out on site earning money, you got to spend another hour back at the depot or in the office organising stuff. So yeah, that's my focus for this year. Organisation. So yeah, see how it goes. But yeah, today, what I want to do is uh, another tips and tricks video. I've had uh, good comments from, from people on these videos. I hope it's been helpful for everyone. Um, you know, all I'm, all I'm trying to achieve here is to uh, you know, help people who've got these mills to come up with some new ideas of how to better run them. Um, depends what you're doing, whether you're trying to do professional milling, um, milling for clients, or uh, professional milling, trying to process timber um, for a furniture business or something. Uh, if you're just a hobbyist, <coughs> a farmer, or a you know, farmer trying to cut fence posts for his property, trying to utilize some of his resources that he's got on his own land, um, or just a hobbyist trying to mill up some trees to uh, make some furniture timber so you can you know, enjoy yourself in the workshop. Whatever you're doing with these mills, um, yeah, great machine. If you're looking to buy one or you've got one, I hope my videos are helpful in some way. All right, cool. So I've had a couple of people asking me about... Um, how long it takes to change a power head on the mill. Um, so what I've got, my setup is I've got a, a dedicated slabber and I've got a six inch dimension cutter, um, the swing blade saw. So I don't own one of those slabbing attachments. Um, I made the decision when I bought these that um, I'd just get a dedicated slabber mainly because you know I'm doing this professionally um, when I'm whether I'm being paid by a client to mill their timber or uh, I'm milling up my own timber for my furniture workshop um, yeah I'm usually on the clock so the dedicated slabber just changing from the swing blade power head to the dedicated slabber just takes minutes um, minutes to do the changeover or the other the other way to do it is oh, here we go as soon as I start filming it starts raining Murphy's law thanks Huey <laughs> um, so the other way to do it is you can have if your site will allow it you can have one power head at one end of the mill 
and you can leave the other power head on the rails at the other end of the mill. Um, just means you've got to pass timber over the side to get it out. But um, what have I done? Yeah, there's the video. Uh, there's a time lapse video that I did. Um, I think it's milling job in Blackwood time lapse. Um, it shows me running the two mills on the the two power heads on the mill at once. Um, so yeah, you can you don't have to take the wood out the side. You can actually, if you can set it up right, you can mill that way and then bring timber out this side or with the mill on the other end. So the slab is on that end, you mill that way and the timber goes out that side. So yeah, if, if you think about it, you can set it up so that it takes like <coughs> less than a minute to change from cutting dimension stock um, framing timber or planks to cutting slabs less than a minute to make that change the other option is to have a um, slabbing attachment I've done a bit of consultancy work for guys with other mills and they had a slabbing attachment and I've worked on a big milling job with a, another crew that had a mill they had a slabbing attachment um, it's great for a hobbyist um, great for you know somebody who's maybe not on the clock getting paid an hourly rate um, if you don't mind spending the time to change from the dimension cutter the swing blade mill swing blade saw to the um, slabbing attachment because you've got to take the blade off you've got to put a sprocket hub on um, you've got to put the set the the, the chainsaw bar, cutter bar, into that frame, tension it all up. It does take takes 10 or 15 minutes to change. Um, so the, you know, the advantages of the slabbing attachment is you only need to carry one power head around. You've only got one power head to maintain. You've only got um, one power head to carry on your, your truck or your trailer or your ute or something. It's a lot less equipment to, ca to cart around um, but the uh, downside offset of that is it takes you a bit of time to change from one cutting style to the other um, I've got my trailer over there which I've custom made for the mill it fits the two power heads side by side on the trailer all the equipment all the mill frame and the rails all fit on the end of the trailer so yeah, I've pretty well set up. I've got my setup done for two power heads. Um, but you know, then I've got to maintain two engines. Uh, make sure two pieces of equipment are running whenever you go to a job. Um, so yeah, there's pros and cons of either way. Sort of depends on how you want to set yourself up. So yeah, what I'll do now is I will uh, just do a quick changeover from the circular saw, the, the uh, dimension cutter, to my dedicated slabber. And then, uh, yeah, I think what I'll do after that, I'm, I've, got to, I've got to get a log from down, down in my log dump and bring it up for my next, uh, next milling log to mill. Um, I've got to do some maintenance on the machines. It's another video I want to do. Somebody's asked about what sort of maintenance stuff you need to do. With these uh, these machines so yeah I'll just quickly do this changeover you can see a real-time changeover see how long it takes to change from one uh, cutter to another and then I'm going to stop the video and I'll go do some other work I'll probably film that as well so those will be uh, videos to come all right <laughs> 